وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked My father takes my money whenever he wants I want to get married and I want to go on hajj and I also want to give da'wah for the sake of Allah However I can't do these things because I can't afford them. What can I do? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Lahul Hamdul Hassan Thanau Al Jameel Wa Shadu An La Ilaha Illa Allah Wa Hadahu La Sharika Lah Yaqool Al Haqqa Wa Huwa Yahdi Sabeel Wa Shadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasooluh Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Tabi'ina Lahum Bi Ihsanin Ila Yawm Al-Din Amma Ba'd In response to your question I say that the father is not allowed to take the wealth of his child unrestrictedly. It is permissible for him to take the wealth of his child in accordance to the need that the father or the mother may have from the child. This hadith that the parent is quoting and using which Ibn Majah narrated in Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and also Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah narrated it in Hadith Amr ibn Shaib and Abihi and Jaddi Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al Asir radiallahu ta'ala an Huma and Shaykh Muhammad Nasir al Din al Albani authenticated in his Irwa al Ghalil and also in his Sahih al Jami'. That hadith is not unrestricted, it is not unrestricted, but it is not unrestricted. Rather, it is restricted with Hadith Aisha. Aisha's hadith can be found in Mustadrak by Imam Abu Abdullah al Hakim in Nisaburi. And Al-Bayhaqi narrated it. And Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani authenticated in Silsila Hadith Sahiha. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna awladakum hibah, your children are a gift. Inna awladakum, your children are hibatullahi lakum, a gift from Allah. Yahabu liman yashahu inatha, wa yahabu liman yashahu dhukur. Allah gives gifts to whoever he wills, a girl, and Allah also gifts Whoever he wills, a boy. So the narration says, they and their wealth are yours if you need it. So as you can see from the narration, when you need it. So it's not unrestrictedly that the father can just take the wealth of his child. He can only take the wealth when there is a need for it. And he really does need it. If the father is taking the wealth from you, and he's taking it to get it ready for you to get married, then there's no problem with this. Because he's bringing about benefit for you. He wants to build you a house. He's preparing you for a future that awaits you. Qala ta'ala Allah says, أَسْكِنُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ سَكَنْتُمْ مِنْ وُجِدِكُمْ So the father is standing up to do that. He wants to get you a house. He wants to get you ready for marriage. If that is what he's doing it for, then there is no problem or any harm. As for... The question is saying that they want to go and do Hajj. Then Hajj, inshallah ta'ala, is in accordance to your ability. There's no ability, the obligation is lifted from you. So don't worry, whenever Allah gives you the ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to go Hajj, go. And if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Right now, what you should focus on is to get married. Because marriage right now, and getting married, is a means to prevent you from a harm. And as for going to Hajj, then going to Hajj is Jalbu Maslaha, it's bringing about benefits. But getting delaying marriage can bring about harm. And the qaida is Daru ama daf'ul mafasidi muqaddamun ala tahqiqil masalihi. Repelling the harm takes precedence over thinking about bringing the benefits. You have to repel the harm first before you try to bring about any benefits. Going Hajj is Jalbul Maslaha. And delaying marriage, harm will come from that. So what do we do in this situation? We repel the harm first before we uh, try to bring about any good. As it's muqarrar fi al al As it is mentioned, uh, in the science of al qawaid al fiqhiyah that is taken from the ahadiths of the Prophet like la darara wa la dirar 
Ibn Majah narrated this in hadith Ubadah ibn Samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Also in hadith Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani authenticated it in his kitab al-Irwa al-Ghalil and he also authenticated it in his silsila hadith al-Sahiha. As for giving da'wah, then it is not permissible for you to give da'wah unless you have sought knowledge and you have gained knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you have acted upon that knowledge. What precedes uh, calling to knowledge is that you yourself have, has, have gained knowledge. That you yourself have gained knowledge or you have attained knowledge. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله. Know that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala here, he, taught, he mentioned knowledge first before acting upon it. فَبَدَأَ بِالْعِلْمِ قَبْلَ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعَمَلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put knowledge before action and preaching and speech. And also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he mentioned that the people who truly fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the way he should be feared, are the people of knowledge. Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء The people who truly fear Allah, the way he should be feared, are the people of knowledge. And da'wah requires khashya, fearing Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the way that you answer questions and the way that you do things. ولذلك الإمام الخطيب البغدادي mentions in his tarikh رحمه الله تعالى he mentions إنما العلم بالتعلم knowledge is attained by striving hard uh, looking for it and seeking it وإنما الحلم بالتحلم and forbearance is attained by trying to look for it ومن يتحرى الخير يعطى ومن يتوقع الشر يوقع the person who tries to look for good inshallah Allah will give it to them and anyone who tries to stay away from the evil, Allah will prevent them from it. Also, Imam Al-Haythami mentions in his Mujma'u Al-Zawaid wa Manba'u Al-Fawaid bi sanadin hasan, marfu'an, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya ayyuha nasu o people, inna ma al-ilmu bit-ta'allumi, wa inna al-fiqa bit-tafaquhi, wa man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi dini, wa inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. That knowledge is attained by looking for it. And fiqh is attained by trying to understand it. And anyone who Allah wants good for them, they, he gives them the understanding of the religion. And the ones who truly fear Allah the way he should be feared are the people of knowledge. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari in his sahih, in Kitab al-Ilm, there's a chapter he chaptered, he called it Babu, the chapter, Al-Ilmu Qabla Al-Qawli Wal-Amal, that knowledge precedes speech and action. وَنَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ أن يوفقنا لما فيه خير العباد والبلاد سبحانك اللهم وبحمد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.